You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Newsroom After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Newsroom After Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the season finale of The Newsroom here at AfterBuzz TV. My name is Kelly, and we are in season one, and we are at our last episode, episode 10, and this is The Greater Fool. And joining me today are... Kendra Cavasel And Kristen Carroll. And uh, Sarah. Sarah's out today. Uh, she couldn't make it today. She has some personal family matters to attend to. So we're actually going to dedi dedicate this finale show to her and her family. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to miss her tonight. Yes. And what a great finale. Like, I was I was kind of <laughs> iffy about it. I was wondering how they were going to close it out. And I personally thought it was great. It was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of yelling for all <laughs> <Yeah>. the <parts. laughs> Well, what I think is funny is all of the Sex in the City references. Because personally, I saw three different ones. Did you guys pick out any? The, well, the bus. The bus right. Was the tour. But also, uh, like, the scene when she gets splashed. It was like an yeah. opening credit in Sex the City. Yeah. But also something that um, in the very beginning, you know, and that brings us to what we're talking about, you know, the very beginning of this, you know, we're, we're obviously the show jumps ahead a lot, and it starts out the, the story in The New Yorker that, um, what was his name, Brian? Mm -hmm. was writing has already been out it's already been out for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and it was you know pretty much a hatchet job is what everybody says that it was you know will is depressed about it nobody likes it and they just thought it was going to be different and it reminded me of in sex in the city when they the new yorker did an article on carrie and put tape Fabulous over her mouth question mark <laughs> oh. and they put tape over her mouth they made her a little cartoon but i just thought that was funny that's the sex in the city <laughs> references but this article um, you know, really has him down in the dump so much so that he's on antidepressants. He, you know, has a bleeding ulcer mm -hmm. and which we is, didn't know at first. Right. It's and is in the hospital. And that was a very dramatic opening. Mm -hmm. The um who is it? The uh Well, it was Lonnie. Right, but who called them? It was oh. the the night guy at the apartment building, right? Because he hadn't Thanks. gone anywhere or something. I think it was his door guy. At his apartment yeah. building that called Lonnie, realize. maybe? I, it all happened kind of quickly. I know. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Because I remember in the beginning they said something like he hasn't been out in a, you know, a few hours or something like that. So I was wondering if it was maybe the apartment building mm -hmm. um, night guy is the one that called, called Lonnie. Maybe so, yeah. Mackenzie's searching for him, can't find him. And then Lonnie notices the blood on the New Yorker and follows this mm -hmm. blood trail. And I took it there. I was expect. I look. I was looking at his wrists as soon as they showed yeah. him the bathroom. Yeah. yeah, but thankfully it wasn't anything. Well, especially because he, you saw the toilet paper paper roll right yes. by there was covered blood. in blood. So yeah. I also figured that he was trying to grab for it. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't yeah. think from him to to slit his wrist, but no. Either. But yeah. I well, I, I thought maybe the his the person that was threatening to kill him came in and like shot him right. or something. <laughs> or the date with yeah. the gun. Oh right, I was expecting the worst. <laughs> yeah, but then we wouldn't have a season two. That's true. So thankfully, <laughs> it wasn't. You know, it was still bad, but it wasn't that traumatic. Mm -hmm. That he um he was he has his bleeding ulcer he was throwing up blood they take him to the hospital and find out that's when Mackenzie finds out he was on antidepressants mm -hmm. and just how hard he's really taking everything well, they said they had taken he had taken too many antidepressants too, and mixed and with also, alcohol mm -hmm. yeah yeah which caused all the which problems does, so yeah yeah as it as it does but he's really harping on the article so much so that he memorizes it and is <laughs> quoting it back. Mm -hmm. Although he's he's always seems to have just a really good memory with everything because mm -hmm. he starts quoting Don Quixote out of nowhere <laughs> as well. So he just knows how to ramble his facts quite well. Right. So 
where do we go from here? He's in the There's hospital. So he, I know. <laughs> I'm still trying to take it all in because I think it was a very powerful episode. There was so mm. much going on. And you know, we, we just finished watching it yeah. <laughs> like, start, like five minutes ago. <laughs> and that's too funny because they, they start with he's back on air. So, you know, he gets, you know. He for less of a better term, his mojo back. Oh, right. But, <laughs> yeah, because he's talking about not going back, that mm-hmm. he doesn't want to go back, that you know, he thinks he's done, he just can't take it anymore. And because quoted in the article were people that he really respects basically calling him ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was a gauge of, a reflection of how he was feeling, I think, mm-hmm. to say he just gives up. Right. He's not one to, to give up. Because, no. you know. But sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, and that's when Mackenzie comes in. It's like, that's, re- you know, that's not, oh my, I'm counting. I know somebody told me that I say, you know, a lot, and now I'm counting <laughs> it, and I've already said it like five times, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't let it go. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like Will now. Um, but he was down on himself because he was getting criticized by people that he really respects and he thinks. And he was pumped up to be that he was making a difference. Mm-hmm. They're calling him old, saying he's living in a fantasy land, that he doesn't know what he's doing, and basically calling him a joke. And he thinks that they're right. Well, because mm-hmm. it's all of his insecurities mm-hmm. printed in black and white. Mm-hmm. That, that's somebody that, you know, was such a hurtful person in his past. Well, with Mackenzie. And mm-hmm. So to have Brian write that about him, even though he had him write that, mm-hmm. it still brought back a lot of feelings. For well, him. it was a big it risk that he him. took to mm-hmm. pick that specific writer to do that, mm-hmm. and he knew he yeah, knew he was playing with fire with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, but at the end though, calling him the greater fool, it all comes full circle. And the thing about this episode, and which most of these episodes do, they go back and forth, back and forth. So it's hard to we have to keep jumping, you know, in time for exactly. during that week. But he's harping on being called a fool when, you know, the definition of a greater fool is not an insult. Mm -hmm. Not really. It's somebody that thinks that they can actually make a change. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing. That's what he's striving to do. And he has to come. (laughs) Yes, his mission (laughs) to civilize. And he has to come with terms with that. And he has to believe that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people will say negative things, especially if they're envious at all of what you're doing or you know, change is scary, especially the change that he's trying to do. It scares other people. Yeah. This when it jumps back and forth and we're going through this news broadcast, this, the opening story about voter ID. Dorothy Cooper. <laughs> Dorothy Cooper. N- nurse Cooper is what was she? Her aunt. Her great aunt. Her yeah. great aunt. Mean news. <laughs> nurse Cooper's great aunt is not allowed to vote because she doesn't have a state issued ID or driver's license because she doesn't drive. Because she was in her 80s. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think she'd been voting, she said, for like 75 years and Mm -hmm. now she can't. And they do this whole thing where they come out and talk about the different states that require voter ID and he breaks down the different political parties and what they stand for and all of that. And it gets really deep and, and interesting and really putting it in layman's terms and showing clips of what these people say and how they contradict themselves and basically a bunch of things that they're just flat out lying about. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, is the most interesting thing about it. You've got people on video saying one thing and then coming back out and saying, well, no, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's basically the Mm -hmm. debate that he wanted to do, except now he has video footage to do it and he doesn't have to worry about, you know, Leona firing him right Mm -hmm. so he can go out there and do that and actually have her kind of backing him yeah because how that all comes about and again with this hopping back and forth Mm -hmm. is the hacking so as we know from the past couple of episodes um this man named solomon had reached out to charlie about an nsa story about illegal hacking and they were trying to see if he was a credible source. And unfortunately, they found some stuff in his background that if they actually used him as a source, it would just kind of debunk the whole story. Yeah. So Charlie goes to him. And this man, you, you can't help but you like feel, him. You like yeah. him. He's a nice. He seems like he really mm-hmm. believes what he's saying, believes what he's doing. He wants to do the right thing. He doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. But in his background, he was stalking his ex-wife. He had a, you know, an arrest for solicitation of sex. And mm-hmm. from years and years and years ago, that doesn't necessarily mean what he's saying isn't the truth. Yeah. But unfortunately, his own vices. Yeah. yeah. And it's just really sad the way mm-hmm. he, you know, talks about 
his life and what he's been doing. And we find out he hasn't seen his kids and all of this. So there's yes. a lot writing on this story for him. Mm -hmm. And Charlie basically tells him the truth. I can't use you as a source, but can you still help me with this TMI information that you have? Which he never did end up giving him. No. They ended up figuring it out on their own, which was pretty genius. But mm, it's a very smart move. Yeah. But that poor man, he just yeah. That was probably his last hope to get yeah, to get his life back together. Exactly. So that he could prove, you know, maybe kind of for for him the greater fool that he had delusions that he could do something more. Mm -hmm. and I think Charlie saw that in him because he even told him, you know, I, I respect you and unfortunately I can't use you though. Right. And unfortunately, he he probably had some mental illness, too, I would think. Maybe because we never really get deep enough into the character yeah. to find out why his kids don't speak to him anymore mm -hmm. and what his real issues are, why he got divorced. I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. Sometimes with those high security government jobs, you're not allowed to say anything, not allowed to do anything. And it puts a kind of divide between you and your family. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know what happened there if it was some of the mental illness because mm -hmm. I, I think in his background check that Jim had found they said a little bit something about it mm -hmm. his, sec his security clearance got lowered and mm -hmm. different things so we really don't know yeah. but I mean he's obviously you know has some issues and it was really unfortunate what what happened to him yeah you know yeah, I liked him I did too mm. I feel it, well, that was a sad moment I think yeah. it was it was sad for Charlie too yeah yeah because he think I think he really felt for him and you know, wanted to believe everything that he was saying, but unfortunately, especially being in the news, you have to have that hard, mm -hmm. the hard evidence, the hard proof. Well, I like, I believe it was Charlie that said, let's make sure Solomon's death is not for, you know, nothing. Oh, I think it was Jim. Was it Jim? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's, you know, that's what we love about Jim. But anyway. Yeah. And they, they did. <laughs> they made sure it worked in their favor and mm -hmm. used that against Leona and. Reese. Well, against Reese, yeah. which I think was so funny that because clever. they that figure clever. Will remembers yeah. leaving a voicemail for Mackenzie that night when he was because basically we find out that TMI is threatening to write a story about Will being high on the news when he was reporting about the um, Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Yeah. Nina Howard find you know calls Mackenzie wants to give her a heads up says I have one source I need another one I really you know she seems to be having a you know a conscious check and doesn't really want to do these bad stories anymore and of course Mackenzie's very skeptical of her but rightfully well, so exactly I think, yeah. you know I, I would not tell Nina anything no. <laughs> absolutely not not even so. what I want for dinner <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. no I mean those gossip columnists it's hard it's hard to mm -hmm. You, know, you really have to censor what you say. Mm -hmm. And even as she says, you know, I didn't dream of what did you dream about when you were a kid? What did you dream about doing? And Mackenzie says exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And she said, I did. I dreamt about doing what you're doing. Nobody dreams about being a gossip columnist. Do you think that's true, though? I don't know. Some Nowadays, people just have people that do. personality. Yeah. <laughs> well, do. now it's a bigger, it's a you know, it's a different time. time. It's a bigger deal now. And it's a lot more. It's not. It, it's so much more. It's like the newspaper. And yeah. then she was defending her job at the New Year's Eve. I believe it was the New mm -hmm. Year's Eve party when she was talking to Will. So here's somebody who is passionate about her job. And I think she was just giving mm -hmm. Mackenzie a line. Could have been. Unless she That's really did thinking. have a you know a change of. Yeah, she could have. I mean, maybe. I think she could have. Because she would have. Then why wouldn't she give her the message at the end? That's true. That's what I was thinking. Well, hmm. If I heard I that, think for she somebody. but I think she liked Will, and I think yeah. that having someone mm -hmm. like him, especially someone that you're attracted to, that you like, basically have them look, stare you in the face and tell you that what you do is crap, lower than that. Mm -hmm. Remember, he told her that it, you know she was lower than a drug dealer mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's tough to take. I think, and it was telling to to see that she you know she put it in the trash and then emptied the trash mm -hmm. you know you know and that's like are you sure yeah that was her that was kind of her moment to show that yes I am ready to move on and do something good they'll work it out Will will eventually mm -hmm. tell um, Mac how he feels but the fact that she was listening to it again well she and just then she didn't to let it take it in she didn't let the message <laughs> finish I think she was a little jealous yeah. But uh, not necessarily that she wants to be with Will, but I think she wants some of that in her own life. Yeah, it could yeah. be, you know, yeah. definitely that. Mm -hmm. Because she stops it before it's over, and I think she's envious of that type of relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she wants someone to think about, maybe feel that way about her, yeah. and it's hard to trust someone. You're afraid that 
yeah. especially in the circles that she runs in. Okay. Almost everybody that you meet is a That was the symbolism target. of the end of that mm-hmm. for her. And I think next season, maybe she'll be at, maybe she'll be at ACN. <laughs> could be, yeah. Yeah, an definitely AP or could something. be. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, they basically trick Reese into admitting that he's been ordering all of this hacking and then record him saying so. And that secures Will's job because mm-hmm. Leona does fire him. Yeah, mm-hmm. that and was well played. It was. It was def- very well played. Because yeah, I was like, Reese isn't going <laughs> to you know, admit this. Uh-huh. Although it's different, I think, when your mom runs the company, too. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> there's a whole personal aspect where you could just see kind of in her eyes yeah. how pain, yeah. how much like pain it, she was kind of in. Well, how embarrassing <laughs> is that? that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that your son, someone that you trust to help with this business that you're running, is kind of doing his own thing and not even verifying thinking of the the consequences because that is a felony to illegally hack into someone's telephone and messages and he was hacking into howard stern mm-hmm. and the casey anthony <laughs> lawyers and everybody to get good stories i said he was hacking into howard stern's out of all of them <laughs> <laughs> but the other ones i could kind of see especially with the stories yeah that, that was just funny uh, <laughs> crazy well not only does it reflect on the company it reflects on her because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's kind of her protege and son, obviously. Right, and he says to her, this is what you wanted. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I guess he felt like that is what she wanted to get rid of Will because of what he was doing, and At he just, costs. that maybe was the impression that, you know, he was given. Yeah. So. Well, those conversations where she tells him, do what you need to do, and he's like, thinking one thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's thinking another. She's like on Don't the take it narrow. to the felony line. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's do th- everything within yeah. reason. <laughs> I was going to have a time out. <laughs> Mama so, said. No, no, no dessert. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's when she basically gives, Charlie tells her, let's let's do the news the right way, you and me. These people are liars. Let's call them out. Let's say that we are not going to stoop to that level anymore. Mm-hmm. Get rid of TMI. Close it down. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the reason going to be that we're not doing that anymore? We are above that. Do you guys think that's what's going on behind the scenes in some of the tabloids we we know? It could be. We know of. I think it could be. Even just in news stations that I've worked in, there's certain stories. Again, I, I worked for one. I interned at one place where they would tell one story and tell certain facts but not the other or downplay it Mm -hmm. so they do that in every news place every news business well and it also depends on what because there are so many of these big companies like acn that own these different Mm -hmm. you know i know of a company that um owned one magazine and the different celebrities that were involved with that well, they distributed it, mm-hmm. but they also owned a tabloid. So when stories would come into the tabloid, they always check and make sure that of what of what they can write that doesn't necessarily the, bad mouth too much because it's still in the family. Mm-hmm. So you still want to tell a story, but it's all about in the way that you tell it. It may not be as you, sleazy or skeezy as it could be. They maybe soften it up a little bit considering that's in the family mm-hmm. of the company. So it gets really interesting. But with the hacking and that I mean that's that, sort of, gets a well, little... that actually happened at the News of the World in um yeah. in the UK. Mm-hmm. They oh, got shut down for that. I'm speaking yeah. locally, but yeah, I know yeah. globally. Yeah. I I mean I wonder if people are trying Doing to that. still do that on the DL. I think after all that stuff happened with News of the World, it mm-hmm. kind of shut that shut you know, it down. chilled chilled it out a little bit <laughs> yeah. maybe. But then they're still kind of independent, you know, bloggers. But there are people, too, that I know of how people have gotten stories that I've had to deal with where they offer money for stories. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful with text messages, especially with iPhones when Mm -hmm. you can do those screenshots. Mm -hmm. You you can email those screenshots. Don't do it. Be careful what you text. It's almost like every man for themselves, Mm -hmm. even with the Empire State Building situation that just happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, I work for a photo licensing company and certain photos were out there before we even got them from you know the professional photographers Mm -hmm. so everyone you know just with their phones are taking pictures anybody can be a journalist nowadays with all you need is a cell phone and the internet Mm -hmm. anything you can do anything and you have to be careful especially if you're someone in the public eye what you talk about what you do where you go and what you're texting because if you Mm -hmm. text somebody the wrong thing they can screenshot it, send it to a tabloid, and it can get blown up and taken way out of proportion, mm-hmm. which are some of the things that I've had to deal with mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. far as, as that. 
Prince Harry. I was just gonna say, yeah, that that was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, I, so with my new expected. job, that was all I heard about last yeah. week. Was yeah, Prince Harry. His Las Vegas partying. You see, you got to be careful. Oh, yeah, and you that can't. was just, and that was closed, you know, behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, sorry, I know we've digressed. Yeah, so, but, but, but. and that sort of thing. So for them to take the stance, I mean, the, but that is the money maker. They, yeah. Those types of magazines and television shows, I mean, we learned that with TMZ, mm-hmm. they make money. People are interested in that, just mm-hmm. like with all of the reality shows. They want to know. Yeah. It's just this big thing. Everybody wants to know what's going on in everybody's life. So to shut that down is going to be a bold step. Mm-hmm. So I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out next season. If they focus on that, it, I think it would be interesting yeah. just because of the business that I'm in. It right. just seems like an and interesting topic. I think they topic. have to touch upon it mm-hmm. because it was such a big part of this season. So at the very least, we'll at least yeah. have to first hear something. Episode. Yeah. yeah. It has to wrap it up. Yeah. So the hacking, everything's out in the open. We find out, we finally, Mackenzie's hounding and hounding Will for this <laughs> message. And we finally get to hear a little bit of it. But unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, Nina didn't want to send it to her. Didn't want to have the girls back. She just wanted to delete it. <laughs> Be selfish. Like little kids through the rest of the episode. <laughs> what did the rest of the message say? Yeah, <laughs> that was cute. It was but. Cute. Also, you know, him wanting to, Will wanting to quit and then coming back because he realizes and he mentions the voicemail and that's mm-hmm. when they figure out that um, Mackenzie's phone got hacked because mm-hmm. he remembers that voicemail. She says she never got it. Well, somebody must have deleted it. Mm-hmm. So do you think that's another reason why he brought in Brian is because he left her this message and she never said a word about it? Could have been. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe that played into it. Because he remembers the message and then she didn't say anything. If mm-hmm. I was, but then bring him well, in I'd for be. just because to- remember when he first brought him in and he tells her, um, I brought him in to torture you and also so you could see us side by side. Oh, right. So maybe, maybe that's a good point. Maybe that was why. Just another way that he was hurt and was just going to bring her down. Mm-hmm. Get some but also so she could see the two of them side by side. What do you like about this one and this one? Make your choice. Make it. <laughs> Eliminate. <No. laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh, but then they start playing Teenage Wasteland. He pulls the IV out. He gets up. He starts quoting Don Quixote at the end, and he's ready to get back in that news chair. He's a little woozy. (laughs) (laughs) He got up too quickly. But all of a sudden, that's all he needed was somebody Mm -hmm. was trying, you know, proof. Yeah. They were really trying to take him down, and he got his confidence back. And, you know, he will go down, but he's not going to take it like that. He wanted his Camelot story. He did. Do you remember what happened just before he remembered that, the message? Uh, that's like when they told him, well, Mackenzie told him that because he said he was saying he wanted to quit and she was telling him that here's the thing they found out that there was a source that Nina but they had needed a second right mm-hmm. so you're probably going to get fired and all of this anyway so he was like who's the source who's the source and, and then I think thinking said, about who it who else did you share that message with and she's like oh, well right. wait message. but wait a minute but when he was saying that though Charlie was in the room too so they, they came back for something what did they come back for I know that's what I'm trying to. <laughs> so much happened in this episode, though. Together. Somehow they, ca- yes, yeah, somehow they came back into the room talking about something before that message came back up, trying to figure out this source. Yeah. And I, am, or was it when Jim was there for a second? No, no Jim was. Jim had already left. Earlier. Yeah. Mm. Which no. that was a funny visit because yeah. Mackenzie's basically treating him like a child do you hear that <laughs> apparently he's deaf <laughs> Give us, what one of my favorite quotes was uh was it maybe you can lift will's spirit with tales of the newsroom <laughs> yeah like, off the office gossip like yeah. That. yeah i don't know that was cute yeah that was cute <laughs> well you have to like her her care for his well-being but then she also wants to know the office gossip while she's gone as well. Well, she's beating him up after he wakes up. How could you do this to me? (laughs) But I like how also she obviously cares a lot about him. She's, you know, she's still in love with him, I think. And Mm -hmm. she wants... with her. Yeah, of course. And she (laughs) wants him to be... To not give up. She wants... She knows that he's better than that article. And Mm -hmm. the way that they wrote it, they took that out of context. And it just... You know, it just didn't... Yeah. It wasn't at all who he is, uh, partly, I think. But the way that it was written was more mean-spirited than it was motivational. Yeah. And I think that's what depressed him the most, is mm-hmm. he wanted 
you know, he wanted someone r- running around from village to village screaming about what he was doing, showing mm. that he's trying to make a difference and change the way things are. Mm. You know, calling out all of those political people for the, the lies that they're telling. That's a, I mean, that's a big deal. That's really I want to see news like that where it shows you say this here and then you talk. I mean, they were highlighting quotes out of the Bible when they <laughs> when they were mm-hmm. pulling up some of these video clips on how the constitution does this and that and things that it clearly doesn't say. That's mm-hmm. what I think is so silly. How can people go on television? And these are people that have teams of people, speech writers. Does nobody fact check? Do you have an intern writing your speech that doesn't know the history of the country mm-hmm. and you're running for public office? Or at least know the history of, of what you've been saying. Right. right. To keep it consistent. Yes. Like, it's um, crazy. Yeah, it was interesting that they used they, the video that uh, Maggie was going through of mm-hmm. Mitt Romney. And and those are the types of things you kind of see on smear campaigns. Yeah. Like the opposite, the opposition plays. But it was mm-hmm. interesting to see it, you know, ready for right. the news. And, and Will was like, yeah, let's, you know, let's yeah. get that in the editing bay. Well, it was also really interesting the way he talks about that the parties feel like they can't come to a compromise. Mm-hmm. That it's always we have to take you down. Mm-hmm. And you hear a lot of the can when they were pulling those clips. I don't think I realized how much sometimes they do say that we need to spend our time making sure Obama doesn't get a second term. Why do you have mm-hmm. to spend your time doing that? Mm-hmm. How about you spend your time lobbying Focus. for what you believe, exactly. focus on what you're doing and not worry about that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It is. It, it shows. The, the lies it's and the a, undercutting. It's a scare and, tactic to yeah. get people yeah. to vote for a certain But way. you shouldn't have to scare Americans into voting. Right. Right. If you talk about what you're doing, and, and that's the whole point of this Newsnight 2.0, what they've been trying to do, you don't have to talk to Americans like they're morons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you talk to them like they're people, maybe they'll vote for you because they believe what you say. Right, right. You don't have to scare me into <laughs> voting for you. Mm-hmm. you have to keep a 70 or 85 year old woman from voting <laughs> because she doesn't vote your way. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all crazy. But I like that this show gets into that. And I know it's been criticized and all of that for the maybe not being 100% accurate all of the time. But it still touches on, you know, key points and it makes mm-hmm. you think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it really a little, makes a little you a bit of reality mixed with some entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I, I can't be mad at that. No, especially when you have little sex in the city things thrown in. You can't help but laugh. <laughs> And that can't help but laugh hilarious. because Jim wants to, in the beginning of his meeting. Okay, everybody's throwing out ideas. Okay, wait, stop. <laughs> Who knows the most about sex yeah. in the city? <laughs> yeah, like somebody classic. goes the show or <laughs> yeah, the girls <laughs> actually <laughs> in New York. Okay, she's it's the like show. yeah, the show. <laughs> the show. She realized how. Silly but I like that how sounded. Neil told him he needed to go to Sex and City School and go take that three-hour tour. Right. Exactly. I was like, it's three hours. It only would have been funnier if Sloan was the one that said that. Yeah. Too. Yeah. She'd be like, I really mm. like that show. And he actually takes the tour. Yeah. I mean, and that that was great. Yeah. That brings us into again with the all the relationship drama that goes on in that newsroom. Mm-hmm. Aside from their work drama, and they have all their own personal stuff. And from the last episode, we saw that Jim went over to Maggie's apartment, and Mackenzie gave him this big speech. You yeah. know, go get her, and he was about to, yeah, and he Don was there. Lisa didn't let him finish, and he's just like, Sorry. "Okay, I'll just date you then." Yeah, <laughs> but Which that ugh. and he's so frustrating right. because as we've seen, Lisa's grown from potentially being this superficial character to mm-hmm. actually being somebody with a lot of heart that you don't want him screwing around with, mm-hmm. and you want him with Maggie, nope. but <laughs> but no, um, <laughs> sorry, <Thank Make> you. <laughs> no, no, I'm distracted. No, uh, I'm sorry, no, it, I agree. Yeah, and and so he's dating her and he's lying to her again. Mm-hmm. And I think well, Maggie's so character is starting to almost annoy me as much as everybody yes. is saying on the internet. <laughs> like, really, I really well, liked her at first. In this, I really last did two episodes. Too, I just want to shake her. I think it's yeah, it's because if you were her friend, you would have, you know, you'd give her. She well, she's constantly lying to herself, and yeah. that's the worst part of it. I think that's the part that I can't wrap my head around. Is maybe people really do that hardcore lie to themselves? Oh, but when too. you're doing, especially in the type of work that she's in, that's how it just doesn't really sit well with me. She's doing this news broadcast, calling out people for being liars and doing all of this. But in her to herself, she's completely tricking herself into thinking she can be 
that she's in love with Don when she's not. Yeah. She's out there screaming at this Sex in the City bus saying it doesn't work out when you're you, the guy that you're that you like is dating your best friend. That doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And then we see that Jim hears her because he's that on that bus, yeah. <laughs> which was really funny. That, it that was like a great it was scene. just a bachelorette party. <laughs> yeah. And then you see Jim's head pop up. It was really funny. And then she he's like, wait right there. She takes off running she and hides. Holds. Yeah. Yeah. But then she comes out. But yeah. I, I think I said earlier that she she was the one hiding under the bed in college and she's still hiding under that bed. Mm -hmm. And this time she's just hiding from the truth and from Jim and not realizing. Well, I think she's, she's hiding from what she really wants in her mm -hmm. life. And it's silly at this point when you have everybody pointing it out to you everybody her best friend i won't date him because you like him mm -hmm. and she convinces her that she doesn't mm -hmm. but then takes her out you know when they're at dinner basically tells her that she does mm -hmm. so and she's then, obviously has a struggle with it which yeah. we know we see and that i understand but to flat out lie to yourself over and over and over is just crazy to me and I don't understand why Lisa's still in it, no matter how great of a guy Jim is. And I like Jim, but you know, maybe she should step away from that yeah. whole situation. Well, yeah. on both of their sides, because Jim shouldn't be still entertaining oh. that. Like he's just, you know, like he told Mac, um, you know, basically they're still dating. <laughs> yeah. Knows, okay. Yeah. And then what happened? Well, well she's I'm funny too. Him. She's you know because Mackenzie's like you want to be like me and Will. He's practically yeah. dead, and <laughs> <laughs> we're not good. together. You know that that was really cute. The back and forth with I that. I really like yeah. that. Too. <laughs> but it, I mean, she's she kissed him tonight. That was huge. Yes. And that was they. Huge. And then she still he tells yeah. her, what if Don had committed to you what then and then she says the wrong thing which is well then we wouldn't be standing here mm -hmm. so basically he's still second choice and he doesn't want to be right, second choice right. he I knows think what she meant by that though was if he had committed to her earlier on there really wouldn't have i mean jim would have come a little bit later but they have such an undeniable chemistry would mm -hmm. it i mean would it have really made a difference if she was married to to Don, oh, I hope Don she Don. would. But, but the way that well, <laughs> but the way that their relationship is though, they're clearly not in love with each other, mm -hmm. and that is just something that's mm -hmm. you can only fake that for so long. It's probably just they they, as Sloane said, somebody that you like, but not somebody that you love. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and I, that's the thing. I love Sloane comes in. To, she basically tells Don she's going to quit and go have a go to make more money and talk about what she wants to talk about. She's frustrated with the way that the news broadcast is going and he's trying to convince her to stay. And then he wants to talk to her about relationships and she's not really that kind of girly girl for it. But she says something very interesting to him, which is basically you think you're a bad guy. So you're trying to do things you think mm -hmm. a good guy would do for someone that you like, but you don't really love. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, and then we find out that she has a crush on him, <laughs> which I still can't get over. That was yeah. We I need were to like, rewatch this whole season and see if she's swooning over him at any point. Well, I, I don't like think she would something. swoon no, over anybody no, ever. But like I was telling you when we were watching it, I think that it is because he comes off as such a douche, and she, I think she might find that a little bit attractive because she's, she's she equally. has a harsher <laughs> personality. Yeah, where it's not fuzzy right up front, and yeah. neither is he. But mm -hmm. she gets him. I think that's where the attraction may be. And they're also b both very assertive with right. what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and going for it. Yeah, but he also seems a little bit receptive to that. Shocked. But also, like, he kind of likes yeah, it. Mm -hmm. But then when Jim walks into it, all of a sudden, he's back to wanting to make this thing work with Maggie. He wants to ask her to move in with him. But even the way he goes about that, he breaks plans with her and sends her a text message, just come meet me at midnight. Mm -hmm. The way that it always was, it was basically <laughs> yeah. like a booty call. Which was part of her speech. She was trying <laughs> yeah. to write not a piece of midnight ass. So that just was. shows, too, that he doesn't really change that much. Nope. That, yes, the gesture was nice with the candles and, you know, being there with the door open when she got there or whatever. But it's still the way he goes about it. It's still his same pattern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought he was going to propose. Yeah. yeah. I well, was, he kind of he proposed <laughs> moving living in, in right? together, which it's is the next it's big in step. a box. <laughs> but yeah. he didn't even take Sloane's advice for that because if mm -hmm. he really would have wanted to commit to her, they've been dating now for over a year. Mm -hmm. Well, a year's mm -hmm. a little fast to get married, maybe. 
But the fact that know. he's scared and he still doesn't know and yeah, I think it's more of the competition. He just doesn't yeah. want her to be with Jim, so he's going to do whatever he can to keep her away from him, she even if it means off. settling for someone he doesn't. He's not really in love with. Yeah, and she keeps getting swept up in that. It's, it's annoying. Yeah, and poor Lisa is just you know <laughs> <She's> <laughs> floating in the wind. I mean, because basically Jim, well, if I can't have you, I'll take her. And I yeah. think he likes her. I think he does. He, and I, well, I think he's trying to come to terms too with. The fact that he's not going to be with Maggie, so he's going to have to move yeah. on. But he should just stay alone for a while. Yeah, well, what kind of fun is that? I think they're all trying <laughs> well, to I mean, convince themselves or, that they're yeah, in love. Mingle, so they're sorry. Yeah. I should say mingle. <laughs> the other, because of all people, does it have to be her roommate? Him yeah. and Neil should go hit the town. Yeah. They had a bromance <laughs> starting early. They did. They should just go grab a few drinks. Neil seems to be Neil's a ladies' in, man. Yeah. Neil's so. in some hot We haven't water. seen his girlfriend in a while. No. Well, Neil is, you know, speaking of Neil, he's trying to find this... Um, the person that made the death threats against yeah. Will, trying mm-hmm. to smoke him out in these, uh, wh- what what did what were the they death called? Threats. Oh, uh, in, in the, those uh, those the forums rooms. that we he was yeah. in. Chat rooms. Yeah, that he was trying to do that. Yeah, and Isn't then he ended up <laughs> he ended up getting him a hundred more death threats. Yeah. instead. <laughs> he's like, what had happened? So he's gonna have to work that out with with. So Lonnie. maybe we're gonna <laughs> see a lot more of Lonnie for next season, yeah. no, which is I don't awesome. know. Yeah, yeah. I like his I character. Like well, definitely go to iTunes, please, and rate and comment. And we appreciate everyone that has been. And let us know what you thought about the season, some of your favorite moments, and what you hope to see for next season. You know, we're really excited for that. And mm-hmm. what do you, you can download everything for free. So make sure to rate us and comment. <laughs> what do you, what were your favorite moments from the season? Oh, me do first. You, yeah, either one. <laughs> yeah, either one. Ready, set, go. Um, well, the thing is, I don't really, I don't think I have a specific favorite moment. I think mm-hmm. I'll. That, w- that was the beauty of this show for me, at least, was, um, you know, that there were so many moments that kind of gave me goosebumps. I think mm-hmm. you guys were in on the same <laughs> feeling. But um, all the times where kind of the, the team came together and mm-hmm. when news was um, presented in a way that they all kind of sh- was stri- were striving for. Mm-hmm. And so those were the, the, the touching moments to me were the ones that were my favorite. Yeah. So... I don't know. That was my. Cause I know it's so general, but that's that's how I felt. Well, one, the one in particular was when they all had the checks for Will and. Oh yes, mm, the Rudy episode. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, that was a great moment for all mm-hmm. of that, and I I love how this show. There are so many different moments to choose from, and I like a lot of the witty one lines. But mm-hmm. I liked early Jim and Maggie too, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. when Jim would. I like that that broke up some of the really serious right. stuff. Because otherwise, that. it's a it's a very heavy show. Right. And thankfully, you have characters that, that don't take themselves too seriously, and Jim can get hit in the head with a door. I think that was one of my favorite <laughs> moments. <laughs> well, I like in th- I, a lot of... I liked this episode a lot. I liked the way that they all come together. The touching moments, as you mm-hmm. mentioned before, were, are really great. And mm-hmm. I saw that in this episode. They all knew that Will was depressed and that you know Jim went to him Sloan went to him and gave him the definition of a greater fool Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and decided to stay to ride that train Mm -hmm. that he's, you know, conducting down. She wants to be on that. She wants to join forces with that. And I like how they all come just like the, the coach episode. They all come together. And that is great. And at the end of this episode, I I got a little teary eyed at the end when the when the Northwestern girl shows back up yeah. <laughs> and wants to be an intern. Circle, yeah. Yeah. And he's, you know, Will's running around. Why do I know her? Why is she yeah. familiar? Why is she familiar? And then when it hits him, mm-hmm. he runs over there. What are you doing here? You ruined my life. Why are you here? And she tells him she wants to be a fool too. A greater fool, yeah. And I and thought that that was great. Again. Yeah. I know. And he asks her, ask me your idiotic question again. <laughs> And she does. And, you know, what makes America great? And he says, you. Yeah. People like that. People that want to stand up and stand apart from the rest. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great message to be on television, to show people that mm-hmm. you don't have to follow the crowd. You can be different and people can laugh at you and call you a fool or whatever they want. Mm-hmm. But as long as you stand up, you know, it's that as long as you stand up and do something different, you can make a difference. Mm-hmm. I like to see yeah. that on television versus these teen pregnancies and whatever else is all over the place. It's nice to see this. Well, and I also like that he finally knew that it was Mackenzie and he wasn't yes. going crazy. And we remember that, that from had the, the very first from episode. The first one. I like that she's been carrying that around right. for the last year in her book. Uh-huh. 15 months. Yeah. 15 <laughs> months, he says. 
all symbolism. It all comes back <laughs> around. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm sad that it's over. There's I so know. much to talk about. And I, we're going to have to get into some predictions because I know we have to wrap it up. But we can definitely continue everything on iTunes. If you guys want to get involved and chat Absolutely. and talk about it, you know, we can get on there. So definitely go rate and comment. Let us know what you think and we can keep the conversation going. But let's get into predictions and think about what we are what we want to see for next season. And now your after buzz TV predictions. So I think I want to see this whole NSA story get broken. That's what I want to see. I want Solomon's death to definitely not be for nothing, this poor man. And I know that Jim and Charlie, they're still working on it. So hopefully I want to see that. I want to see how they're going to play that out. Mm -hmm. I want to see how TMI is going to be no more. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be too much information anymore. <laughs> No I agree, and I want to see no Leona's like, new role mm -hmm. in this because they left it where Jane Fonda has to come back. Yeah, absolutely. Happens. They can't, they can't let this go. So I, I think she's going to come in, and this network's going to be a lot, a lot more pushy mm -hmm. than it was before. I hope so. I, I would, yeah. I would like to see that. What yeah, about I you? I think can it'll, you? it'll get juicier. Um, mm -hmm both in the newsroom professionally and personally yeah. um, with Sloan, especially passing up a $4 million salary yeah. to, to, you know, do what she think is, thinks mm -hmm. is best for her. Um, and then the relationships. We need to see some more. I think we're going to see some Sloan and Don. Do you think that they can really go w without speaking or looking at each other no. or anything like she said? Do you He's going to be staring at her every time she's in the room. Yep. But is there going to be some cheating? Ooh. I don't they, know. Does Sorkin go that route? Do we think? Well, do we think that Maggie's going to move in one? And do we think? I think Maggie will move in. I think Maggie will move in. Ugh. Yeah. I think she will. But then, do you She's think Jim will move in with Lisa? Will there be like a? Ooh. Ooh. Cause, cause I don't know. I don't think he. I don't think he. They're just going to get married. And <laughs> <laughs> that's Jim might be that nice be guy. Yeah. 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 They'll probably be married <laughs> with the kid, <laughs> and then he'll break up with. Them. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I still call it third season, Jim and Maggie. <laughs> Let's That's see. What happens. I don't know. She needs to buck up a little bit. She needs to. I don't know. She needs to toughen up She's for next season. She's got to win back some fans next <laughs> she season. She needs to. She needs to toughen up a little bit. A little bit more confidence. That's what I want to see in Maggie. Yeah. I don't know. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We uh, are very sad to see the show end, and we can't wait for next season. So make sure to go to iTunes, download the podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at AfterBuzzTV, and you can follow me at Kelly with an I E O seven nine, and Kendra at. At Kendra Cavasell, K E N D R A K A B A S E L E. And you can follow me at the fan, F A N 2 C T O S E E. Thanks again, guys, and we will see you next season. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.